Good morning, everybody. I'm Mary Hemsworth um, with Cater.com, and this is my catch up with Shane Cook from Jasper Wellbeing. Good morning, Shane. Welcome. Good morning, Mary. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, I'm all right with uh, considering the ever changing world. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, in the words of the song, and the ever changing world in which we're living. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Um, Shane, the reason I'm talking to you today is because you've got a very interesting background. You were a chef and now you've completely changed focus. So tell me a little bit about how you got into the industry and what prompted the change. So I got in the industry. It's it's one of them typical stories of, um, you know, not kind of showing a massive interest at school. I was massively creative um, rather than rather than academic. And um, but I always wanted to work. So at 15, 14, I think I was, I was I got a job in the pot wash and then um, in, in a local restaurant up north, back at home. And um, yeah, that grew into when I start, went to leave school, um, they realised I had a, a great ability uh, when it came to, to food prep. And they offered me a job to send me to college one day a week. And um, yeah, I worked there for a year and uh, uh, my... My kind of, my brain has always been one of those where I need to do better. I need to get to be great at what I do. So, yeah, after a few years of a few different places, I moved to Cornwall. Um, then I moved to Oxford and um, somehow got a job in a two Michelin star hotel there. Uh -huh. Worked there for a few years and then um, did the old trip to London that many of us do as as chefs and um, uh, yeah, and I've uh, I now live in Surrey, but um, worked in London for the past whew, uh, 10, 10 years, maybe slightly longer. And um, yeah, my last job most recently was a senior group exec chef of a boutique contract caterer in in the city. Cool. Yeah. But you've got some stories to tell, which unfortunately we don't have time for now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next time. So tell me, how did you, what prompted the switch and what prompted you to create Jasper Wellbeing? So uh, for, for many years, um, I was in a, I guess for many years, I was in and out of a mindset which I didn't understand. Um, for I'd say I'd say from just just before London, uh -huh. uh, and then and then as I came to London, um, I was kind of feeling, I guess you can say, well at the time, but now I realise it was um, severe anxiety, depressive disorder. But I didn't know this until a few years ago when I looked back. So I went many years feeling, um, I guess you can say, not right down, miserable, um, lack of energy. There was all these sort of things, but I just thought I need to plug on because that's what we're trained to do. We need to push, we need to, to train, not knowing how to look after ourselves. That's just that's just how it was. Um, and then um, I'd say it must be four years ago now, I was kind of, at a, in my head, I was kind of at a real rock bottom point. I'd, I'd, no one knew anything was wrong with me because I hit it well when I went to work. Um, but I did hit a rock bottom point and um, I was actually walking down the street in in walking and something kind of, I was outside a martial arts gym, something made me look in there and it was drawing me in. I didn't even like mar martial arts or the, or the gym, but something made me go in and gave me the confidence. I was, I had no confidence whatsoever at, at the time and something dragged me in and I came across, I came, it was empty, came across this guy who was a trainer. He said, do you want to hit some pads? I said, yes. I was getting angry and stressed out because I couldn't do it. And he said, I know you don't know me, but I can see there's a lot of tension and stress. I work with a lot of people around your age. Do you want to talk about anything? And that's the first time anyone had ever asked me in six years of, of kind of the first time anyone had noticed. And I did talk to him. And it lifted this weight off my shoulders. So then after, uh, I kind of started training and getting better and better. And then I got into this peak, like mental and physical state in my life. And I re uh, what I um, started realizing is I can help chefs. 
um, and use fitness to help them. Um, but with kind of getting busy again, you know, not having that kind of information in your head of how to do things, you think once you're better, you're better. Once you're better, you're good. So I stopped training. <clears throat> Then it started decreasing again, and the same thing happened, and I allowed it to get to a, a certain state. But at this point, um, I'd, I understood things. I got help. Um, and what I realized from that, once I kind of got back into a, a, a good mindset and had things under control, I started analyzing the last 10 years and looking into it, and I thought there's a lot missing here. You know, no one ever spoke to me or realised I was acting up or possibly sometimes being aggressive or emotional and, and no one really knew. So there's a lot to, to learn here. So I started having different ideas and there's been ideas in the background for, uh, for a long time. Um, and then two years ago, um, I went for the Acorn Scholarship and I pitched my idea to them and I won it. Um, and that was the start of Jasper coming together as a business. Um, and it's grown from there with the support of Purple Cubed. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's how it came about. And I really felt like I knew what we needed in the industry. So I looked very deeply into specific models and stuff that I could use that would really benefit the industry. Um, and, um, yeah, that's where I am today. I was, so it was one of them side things where I'm working full time, you know, I can't make that switch because it's not cost effective for me and, and my life and stuff. But then I was put on furlough uh -huh. and, I was made, and then subsequently made redundant. So since March, I have been working very hard, working on new models, working on my offer. And um, it's uh, brought this new sense of energy, and 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 I just feel kind of nourished, and and I really feel like I've got at the point now where I've got something really concrete that can really, really make change. And here we are today, Jasper Wellbeing. I love it. I what what really strikes a chord with me, and anybody watching this video will be that you speak a truth there we did some research back in uh, last year about chefs and depression and depression in hospitality and mental health in hospitality and it's something at cater.com we're very very strong on and the figures are phenomenal and the first step i think is being able to recognize how you are feeling and as a chef when you're under so much pressure taking that moment to go i'm not right and being able to vocalize it is a huge step in the right direction and obviously you can see that you're so passionate and energized by jasper now what does jasper do what what do you what services do you provide so first of all i'd like to tell you what jasper means um which it's got a meaning behind it so jasper um obviously my journey has been about healing and when i created jasper um i was i was trying to think how can this mean something but it doesn't kind of scream out to everyone so it can be a little kind of talking point now it kind of backfired because a lot of co people just call me jasper <laughs> through email and everything but what it is it's a, um the, the colors of the brand and everything it's the the color of jasper which is a healing crystal it's that maroony type color now that's a healing crystal but the meaning behind the crystal, healing crystal is it's known as the supreme nurturer so that's so that's what we do. We 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 are a nurturing company. Um, we are here to um, inspire and empower not only individuals but also businesses, um, and just to um, help facilitate and bring in those tools that can that can help them thrive. You know, both individuals and businesses. Fantastic. I mean, I've, seen, I've had a look at your website and your website is pretty fantastic. There's some amazing stuff on there. I mean, the, one of the things that I really love is the whole idea of RAW, which is spelled W-R-A-Y, uh, W-R-A-W, sorry, can't spell today. Um, yeah. And that whole workplace resilience and well-being. Do you want to tell me a little bit about RAW? Yes, RAW is to me an absolutely elite 
um, model for uh, building resilience. It was actually, um, it was developed by a company called the Wellbeing Project, and it was mostly used in kind of, from what I saw, corporate kind of businesses. Now, when I was looking through, I was, uh, and when I was looking for a model, I was really researching, I researched for a long time, what can I do which fits into hospitality? And um, this is this is what I came across. So um, what we, what it involves is obviously it's 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 workplace resilience and well-being. Now resilience is something that is uh, needs to be an even bigger topic um, than it is, you know. And it obviously resilience means to bounce back to to be able to um, cope with situations in a way that um, uh, that isn't damaging. So it's based on um, pillars of resilience. Now what stood out to me is is there's an energy pillar. So this is why it stood out for me for chefs, especially because you, you know you look into um, to sleep, which is very important, balance, uh -huh. um, healthy intake, and then um, exercise or movement. And these four things are the base of it, and that straight away kind of had me almost so because I thought these are the things we struggle with within hospitality. And another thing is that we really struggle with is future focus which is one of the pillars, and also strong relationships, which means it, it means accessing support and, open, and being able to have that culture, that open culture where we're, we're able to have the confidence to speak out. So it kind of all fell into place um, like that. Now, it is based around a psychometric tool. We've all done psychometric tools, but the difference here is this psychometric tool was the um, is is a tool that measures um, uh, resilience and its impact on your well-being. So that's yeah. what makes so that's what makes it unique. So you do the psychometric test, and where most psychometric tests we do them, and then it gives us some typical answers, you know, as most, and and that's the end of it. The, the great thing about RAW is um, you do the psychometric test and then you have a one-to-one -one debrief. So you go through the results and you build a personal strategy for that person. So it helps people to understand their own wants, their own needs. And you know, once you do that, that puts you in a great position once you understand your, your own needs and yourself to help others. So it kind of comes all around and then you can put everyone's individual reports into team reports. And then it becomes workshops, team workshops, leader workshop, organizing, organizational workshops. So what we're doing here is giving people an understanding of the, the, themselves, then the teams. We bring them teams together. That creates that understanding. Then it spreads out to the organization. And that's part of opening that, that open culture, that talking culture, that culture of actually understanding mental health, well-being, and that's what makes it such an incredible model because it's very inclusive. Um, everyone is there um, with each other. But first of all, obviously the most important bit is that, that personal touch. So it has it all. And um, for our industry, I think it's, it's, it's an incredible thing. I've spent a lot of time looking at it. Like the five pillars really strikes me. I mean, particularly the piece about you know strong relationships because mm. at the moment, at the moment, relationships are under they're under pressure. I mean, we are going through something that none of us have ever gone through before, I, and it the the changes are so fast and so frequent that unless you have very strong a very strong support network. It can affect everything, or you know, at your energy levels. It can affect absolutely everything. So yeah, I think the raw to I, I, businesses could benefit so much from that. I mean, it's that thing as well of you speak hospitality language. You've this been there. You've experienced it yourself. So I mean, you bring all of those tools to you, to businesses, don't you? Exactly. So I've got um, I've got these great tools as well as you know as well as the um, mindfulness. Um, which the mindfulness that I do is also um, is with um, mindfulness now. So it's a mixture of cognitive behavioral th um, kind of therapy techniques as well. So I bring all these together and, and it's exactly like you said, for me, I've got that connection to the people. 
that personal connection. I've been in the industry. Um, I still see myself as part of the industry. I've got knowledge of our food systems in every part of our industry, how it works, you know, how complex it can be to fit these 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 type of um, implementations into our our very very busy um, businesses. But um, I feel like I, I I know how to do that, and just my my. my my tools that I've got, I just feel um, c can fit in fit in nicely, along with the knowledge, of course, of, of the industry. Um, then you know it kind of just all slips in beautifully, you know. I think one of the things that's really relevant right now for for the industry is that during the first lockdown, um, we all a lot of businesses pivoted and particularly HR teams pivoted. So instead of dealing with human resources, they were now dealing with communication and becoming much more generalist and health, well-being, resilience all came right to the top of the agenda and are still there, quite rightly so. And I think that's going to be the case going forward, which is why what you br bring to the industry is going to be so valuable as we go forward. I, I, you know, I don't think this is going to change. What do you think? Um, no, not at all. I want to kind of touch on that um, that HR. You know, HR departments have found their jobs very, um, very different, and um, they've had to kind of navigate situations that they weren't in before. But this is where the importance of having resilience in place for these things. So we have, um, you know, we can we can quickly um, adapt to change, especially, you know. If we were if if we were really focused on these things so much, and um, way back when changes like this happen, like COVID nineteen, we would be more ready and more resilient to to these um, to these situations. But often, as humans, as businesses, in the past, to the, um, we've been very reactive to situations rather than that that proactive but ho hopefully with everything that's happened that that kind of has has really switched around so um if we get all the 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 the, the right models concepts and and thought processes in place then if anything like this happens again we're going to be not just ready for something like covid but ready for anything and resilient to it as individuals you know we all sit we're a resilient industry but as resilient individuals, individual businesses, you know, to, to, to take away from that kind of collateral damage of something big like this happening. But um, we're getting there and um, it's it's great to see. Um, yeah, so. We are getting there. People can get in touch with you through their, your website, can't they? Um, which Thanks. we will link in to the, in, when we put this with the video out. Um, Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Um, it's been a real pleasure, Shane. And um, I know businesses in hospitality particularly can benefit from everything you bring to the table. So thank you. And you have a good weekend. Thank, thank you very much for, for having me. I'll have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.